This is a OK Auto by John Salt, painted in 2002 to 3, painted in casein on canvas. It was acquired for the Southam City Art Gallery's permanent collection after a solo exhibition in 2004. John Salt was born in Birmingham in 1937. He trained at Birmingham School of Art and then went to the Slade, where his tutor was Claude Rogers, of the Euston Road School artist. But John realised that he should have been at the Royal College, who were looking to art in the States, the new capital of the avant-garde art world. Up to then, he was making canvases with collage, featuring archetypal motifs and uh, engineering designs in abstracted landscapes. Two years later, he was offered a scholarship to enrol as a postgraduate at the Maryland Institute College of Art, Baltimore. He got his chance to go to America. Quickly after arriving there, his interest in cars, engendered through his upbringing in Birmingham, a city of car manufacturing, came to the fore. Under the influence of photographers such as Lee Freelander and Gary Winogrand, and pop artist John Clem Clark, and pop art to some extent, he began to paint them with an increasingly matter-of-fact slickness. The reproductions in a brochure he picked up from a local Buick dealership exemplified for him the American fetish of the car and provided war material for an important artistic breakthrough. His work then became spray-painted responses to the printed photos with stencils. I wanted something that's not art, he said, something that's different, cool. And at the time I realised that I had something that was mine. It may not be very good, but it was original. After all this time, I finally got rid of all these influences, and it was really me. Soon after moving to New York in the late summer of 1969, Salt became fascinated by wrecked cars dumped from under the approach to the Brooklyn Bridge. Instead of promising a future of happy motoring, the photographs he took of them were snapshots of malfunction and obsolescence, the other side of the capitalist dream. He referred to these cars as arrested vehicles, at once suggesting transgression and a halt to progress, particularly poignant giving the cars symbolic status with respect to modernism. And we begin to see them literally in a wider contest. The Arta later stands further back, showing us more of his subject and its circumstances. There are other cars around on grim, littered streets, comprising scenarios that match the twisted, rusted metal of traumatised bodywork broken windows and seats that are now absolutely uninviting. As Salt's images were becoming more complex, he began to use an airbrush with finely cut stencils that resulted in a very intricate, unpainterly surface. He said, I was interested in spray because it gives a kind of non-handled, non-mark. I didn't want the artist's mark. I wanted to eliminate the idea of the artist in it. I wanted to be neutral. With such a style paradoxically impersonal and yet distinctly his, Salt took his place amongst American photorealists, the first 16 original first-generation artists, featuring in group shows with others including Chuck Close, Richard Estes, Richard Cottingham, Robert Bechtel, Ralph Goings and Richard MacLean, all over the world. The progression in Salt's artistic career at this time was dramatic and rapid, Mirroring his stylistic and technical development was a shift in subject matter, a switch in emotional direction, from the anticipated pleasure of promotional imagery to the jolting violence of wreckage. By the mid-1970s, the pictorial space of his work had opened up even more, often to accommodate landscape and a quieter mood, perhaps a more English romantic look. Now we see cars not just crashed, so much as discarded, left to fend for themselves, unprotected from the elements and other incrementally destructive forces. They are being undone, gradually without the recommended routines of regular maintenance and the washes and polishings that are lavished on much-loved new vehicles. These cars are not just alone in their sad states. They're usually symptomatic of a marginalised lifestyle, a world of shacks, jerry-built and trailer homes, locations far from the affluent metropolis. Here is unwanted stuff, strewn around dwelling places rather than neatly thrown away, but rarely do we see the human inhabitants. John Salt produces a huge amount of skill and patience in producing these works. A painting may take many months to make, an extraordinary way to make a painting, but the results are poetic and extraordinary. The paint is wafer thin and there's no hint of the artist's approach. The artist first makes a detailed drawing from slides uh, which he projects onto the paper or canvas then referring to colour print and making extraordinary complex lace-like stencils he will spray through 
uh, and, and one little area may take up to sort of 20 stencils. He starts top left and finishes bottom right and the painting inches along slowly week by week. For more detailed parts he will cut and arrange a range of very finely cut stencils, mixing the colour each time and getting the, the correct mix. They are quite extraordinary paintings.